the main event for Invicta FC 51. It's going to be a bantamweight bout at 135 pounds between Tanisha Tennant, who goes by triple threat, versus Talita Bernardo, the Brazilian fighter. Bernardo's 9-4 and four overall, 4-1 four in her last five fights. She hails from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, 35 years old, about to be 36 pretty soon. 5 foot 4 and 68 in treach, and she's at an IF team. As for Tanisha Tennant, 5-1 and one overall, a little less MMA experience, 4-1 in her last five fights. From New York City, New York, 33 years old, five foot seven in height with a 72 inch reach, and I emphasize the five seven and 72 inch reach because she'll have about a three inch height advantage and roughly a four inch reach advantage. If she fights her game plan, that will matter. If Talita closes distance and grapples her, then that range and that you know reach advantage will have you know no no play in this fight. As for Tennant, she trains out of Budokan Martial Arts Academy. All right, so I have some notes in these two fighters. I'm not going to take too much time. I'm going to tell you right now that in the most recent fights that I've looked at of Tanisha Tennant, the biggest question mark for me is a sense of urgency or the lack thereof. Her last fight, for example, she got into a back and forth, very close fight, won by split decision. So she kind of just barely held on to her belt. And she got that split decision win over Olga, who's also in this fight card. We'll talk about her too. Um... Olga Rubin. The fight was so close that at times I couldn't understand why Tennant wasn't, you know, pushing, you know, like realizing, hey, this is a close fight. I've got to, you know, I have a sense of urgency. What I felt like a lot of leaf, a lot of meat was left in the bone. She has good volume, but limited power. We are talking 135 pounds, which makes sense. Um, I should preface that her volume needs to be better. So her volume is just not enough. Um, her striking looks good at range. She does that well. So her kicking, nice long legs. She's got a bit of a boxing background. So that looks natural. It looks good. But when I'm looking at her most recent wins, the people that she's beat, like Lisa Rizzoza by decision, um, these are lower level talented fighters. And to case, in the case of Olga uh, Rubin, it should be said that Olga Rubin had run in the Bellator and whatever else. So she's actually a decent opponent. But heck, that fight, some people thought Olga won and at least one judge thought she won. So what am I saying to you? What I'm saying to you is Tanisha Tennant did not do anything recently to like knock your socks off and get you very excited. I think when you're looking at her without ever seeing her fight, her physique is impressive, the long physique. And if you're just looking at it on paper, you're thinking the range, distance, there's the advantages, right? No ground game. Tanisha Tennant has stand-up offense. I'll give her that. If you take her down, she'll get up. But in terms of doing something on the ground offensively, that's not her wheelhouse. So she's a stand-up only fighter with limited striking power. What's her path to victory? By decision, out volume her opponent. I mentioned a boxing background. So she doesn't have like a judo, jiu-jitsu, wrestling background. Okay, so her background is straight up striking and that's where she looks her best. As for Talita Bernardo, former UFC fighter, we mentioned before, she went one and three in the UFC. Kind of a tough situation because you see one in three, you're like, oh, she kind of sucks. But then again, she fought some decent competition. You know, she fought Vivian Araju. You know, she she fought some decent fighters, okay? Her experience level is twice as much in the cage, period. She has more fights. And then also, she's fought much better competition. I'm thinking Talita Bernardo would have to really drop the ball here to not be able to use that experience. Some grappling, push Tanisha up against the cage, Physically take advantage of her because Tanisha is not, again, she's very long. She's tall. So you can see how a, a shorter fighter can get their head under her chin, take advantage of her physically, hold her there, scrape her down. And now we've got a situation where Tennant could get back up, maybe gives up her back, you know, and so on and so on. Now, looking at Talita Bernardo's most recent record, I wanted to look at something here. I had a note to remind myself. So she's coming off of these losses in the UFC to Irene Aldana, Marianne Renault, which is eh, and Vivian Araja knocked her out. That is one concern I do have for Talita is that of her four losses in her career, she was knocked out in two of those four losses. Looking at this fight, though, I don't see that being in the cards. If you watch some film on Tanisha Tennant, and it's out there, this film of her out there. Again, she's got middle of the range volume, not a lot of power. And I would have to imagine Talita would really have to do something silly to find herself in the crosshairs. Dare I say that I believe that Tennant would be the kind of fighter where even if she buzzed her opponent, she wouldn't push the gas pedal down far enough because she lacks that sense of urgency. So grappling wise, 
is there an avenue there for Talita? Absolutely. Now, is she a big-time grappler? I guess it depends on who she's fighting, how much cardio she's got, you know, because in the beginning of a fight, she'll chase one or two takedowns, but then if she gets defended, she'll give up on that game plan. And then if you're betting on Talita, you're like, oh, don't give up on the grambling, on the grappling, you know, try to stick with it. On the feet, if it's like two full rounds on the feet, there's where Tenet has a path to victory. We got to acknowledge it. Um, that's where she wants to have the fight. It's going to be up to Talita to close the distance, make it a little bit ugly, grapple her, bring her down. The betting spots we like the most for this fight are the over two and a half rounds and the fight goes the distance. That's not rocket science, now, but it is a five round fight. So seeing going the distance in this situation is going to be five full rounds, but I still see it going five full rounds. The over two and a half, over three and a half, they might not be available. So that prop's probably not going to be available. From a parlay standpoint, because we will do some parlays today, I don't believe that we're going to be doing any parlaying with this fight. Um, there's going to be some question marks there on both sides. But the pick is going to be Toledo. Uh, Toledo Bernardo, by decision. I have some sense of confidence there. Though I'll tell you what, one mistake that we've made in the past is, or everyone's made this mistake, you bet against the fighter because you lack so much confidence in that fighter. And so maybe having such a built up feeling towards going against Tenet, tenet you know, is, is not jading us into thinking that, oh, Bernardo should win this fight easily. I don't think it's going to be quote unquote easy. I just believe that Bernardo has the experience specifically in the UFC against some good opponents. She should be able to do enough grappling here, some control time. And I just don't see Tenet doing enough. And, uh, and so we have a fight to go towards Bernardo by decision. That's the pick guys. Let's move on. Actually, no, that's the last fight in the card. So we're not moving on. I'll give you a quick summary of their picks here in just a second. Be right back.